I didn't realize that I was being abused. I thought that I was being strong with a complicated person. And that was kind of what was being fed to me, you know? And then I think I was already mad and I was already alone. This person made me feel like we were gonna go on this great adventure of freedom and, you know, <laughs> experimentation. And it was, it was very, very far from that. It was the opposite of freedom. Looking back on my relationship now, it was a textbook domestic violence relationship. When I read about domestic violence, it's like reading an autobiography. The message I want to get out now is I want to name them, but I can't. I think domestic violence was, is so normalized and was normalized to me that uh, I couldn't see a crime being committed when it was being committed. I just didn't know. I was so young. I didn't know, you know, that you could be raped by your partner. And even if I did know that, I don't think I would have thought that anybody would ever believe me because how do you prove that? Part of the conditioning when you're in that relationship is believing that it's your fault and that you've done something to deserve this. What people don't tell you is there are, there's a period where everything's fine, you know, or seemingly fine, and this person's treating you like a princess, and they're grooming you, and they're making you, they're, they're luring you into this, you know, illusion of, of safety and stability. And if you're already kind of an angry, lonely kid, that just reinforces kind of everything you're already feeling. They present themselves as the savior, and then something happens, and it's shocking, and you feel like, what happened? This person that I love that's so nice just did this and it was so out of character. It must have been me. I must have done this. If I hadn't had acting, and I think one of the reasons why I was so good at it was because I didn't have any other way to let out feelings or, or emotion. And if I did, it was on myself. I sort of gave up autonomy over my body and my image and my wants and just tailored them to whoever I was with because that's what I was sort of trained to do. And so you start to go, okay, but what about me? Like, what about who I am and what about what I want? And I think because I did well in my career, no one wanted to hear about my problems. And so I kept them all in. That then sort of segued into um, much more dangerous uh, self-destructive behavior later on in life. Let's talk about sexuality. Let's do it! <laughs> do you feel more comfortable now in your body? <laughs> I do, you know, I, um, I was always like a tomboy and I was, still was, <laughs> pale and skinny and I was, I felt really like awkward and gangly when I was a teenager and a kid. Um, I'm still waiting for my boobs to come in. <laughs> <laughs> I did go through a phase in middle school where I was kind of like, why is everybody else, what, what's happening? <laughs> um, because, you know, the, 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 what I thought was beautiful was like, you're, you're tan and you're voluptuous and I just wasn't any of those things. So then when I finally had that time where I could be myself and I took a break from acting, took a break from everything and just went to explore. And then I realized, oh, I'm actually... I'm actually pretty great just the way I am, and I really feel seen, and this is really cool, and what a great feeling. I had always worn boys' clothes when I was a kid and always wanted to dress more masculine, but was just too scared, and then once I came out, it, it felt like I, I had permission to do that. I started to like my body even more because it kind of felt like it really fit who I wanted to be and who I was, and. I liked my small boobs and I liked the way my shirts fit and I liked being able to, you know, sort of straddle this line of masculine and feminine and I liked that there were parts of my body that were really feminine and parts that were kind of strong and masculine and I was like, oh, I've actually been giving the perfect body for who I am. You know, I think we don't realize how much shame has an effect on our body and our sexuality and our confidence and our mental health. I remember when I first, you know, started to have sexual encounters, I wouldn't let anybody take my shirt off because I was like ashamed of my body. Like when you really think about that, like what a sad thing, it's your fucking body. It's so great, it can do so many things. Like it's there to enjoy and like I couldn't even like share it with my most intimate partner and that, you know, that, 
that was sad. But I knew that I liked girls. I think when I was 12 is when it really hit me to the point where I thought I was gonna have a panic attack. <laughs> you know, where it was like, oh no. <laughs> um, but I still hadn't come out of the closet yet. So I still didn't really get that there was a reason why I was always Sporty Spice. I think in high school, I learned about bisexuality and I thought, oh, wait, that's allowed? The difference that would have made in my life if I had been able to grow up and just like whoever I liked and had a, more of an understanding of what I was feeling. And I still really wasn't like having relationships with girls. That didn't really happen until later in life. I was like, okay, I know this is a part of me. I really haven't explored it fully and I wanna do that. So that's what I did. And I got my best pair of Doc Martens and I moved to the Lower East Side in New York and, you know, had a great time just discovering who I was and, you know, immersing myself in the queer community and feeling what that was like and feeling like I had found my tribe, but then also feeling like my tribe was slightly against me because I was bi. And even though I didn't have language for that, I felt it and I knew that no one was really seeing me. I'm very confident in my sexuality now and it did change again my relationship to my body because I could let go of a lot of shame you know I think we don't realize how much shame has an effect on our body and our sexuality and our confidence and our mental health I thought a lot about what my son you know will, will think when he learns or is able to fully understand everything about me part of the reason why i do what i do and why i fought so hard and why i have been so honest is because that's what i want him to do and that's who i want him to be and that's what i hope i'm passing on to him i didn't realize that after i got pregnant and had a baby that it would be like being given a, a completely different body because it changes the makeup of your brain, it changes the makeup of your body. It was like going from standard to widescreen. And suddenly I felt like I had superpowers. I could feed my baby, you know, with these breasts that I used to feel so insecure about in middle school. And then suddenly they were D's. <laughs> and here were these boobs that I had always been curious about. And suddenly I had them and I was like, I don't like it. <laughs> I loved that they were there and that, you know, I, and I had this amazing milk supply and I could feed my child, but um, I actually ended up <laughs> wanting them to go back down. I really did feel beautiful when I was pregnant. I know, you know, not all the time, obviously, but like for the most part, yeah, I felt like everything about m my makeup as a human was changing, right? That every cell of my body was changing and it was getting rewired and it was, it was like, I don't even know how to explain it, but um, it just changed everything. It was like the ultimate test, the ultimate thing that I felt like I could do with my body. I don't think it's like the ultimate thing that makes you a woman. But for me personally, I knew that I wanted this experience and I, was, I thought it was just so incredible what my body was able to do. And I just feel like I've never been the same. I've never been the same. I didn't really grow up in an environment where people talked about their feelings. Emotionally, there was just no communication, unless, you know, it was written for me in a script. Then I felt safe enough to emote. I think I just ad adapted to uh, pleasing a everybody else and giving everybody what they wanted and, and making people happy and not realizing that I was kind of setting myself up for later in life being in relationships where I did the same thing. The more we're able to really have honest conversations, the more we're gonna connect, the more we're gonna heal, you know, the less shame we're gonna have. Honestly, it's just as moving to have people really listen to you, you know.